Hi friends, so today I'm going to start the Fortran tutorial series and we are going to introduce basic concepts in today's lecture. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Now if we look at Fortran, Fortran is a language which has been around for quite a long time. So its name comes from formula translation. So that's how you get Fortran. It was actually created by somebody named John Backus in IBM in 1957. And the initial Fortran versions which were out there were known as Fortran 2. Then there was a Fortran 4 version. There was Watt 4 and Watt 5. And then Fortran 77 came up. This is actually the standard version of Fortran, which is there in many codes out there, many software packages out there and so on. Now, of course, one of the reasons Fortran was popular and continues to be popular is because it's a language specifically designed for numerical and scientific computing. And there are a plethora of codes out there in these fields which are written in Fortran. So it's often sometimes simpler to just modify these Fortran packages or Fortran codes rather than write your new code. Now there's also a version known as Fortran 90. That is a newer version. And the interesting thing is that since 2024, Fortran is in the top 10 language list of the Tiobe programming languages. So that's something which is interesting. Fortran is even ahead of languages such as MATLAB and Rust and so on. So what we are going to discuss in this tutorial series is Fortran 77 because it's important to know the basic ideas in Fortran and many things have come up since then, but it's important to know what's the underlying basics so you can understand some of the older codes which are out there. Now it may happen that you are doing something like machine learning, but the simulation you are using has been written in Fortran. So in that case, you may need to go into the code and modify it. Now let's look at the characters used in Fortran. So essentially you use the different letters of the alphabet. So A, B, C, D, all the way to X, Y, Z or Z. Now in classical Fortran, you actually use capital letters, but Many of the modern compilers let you use small letters also. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, as far as Fortran is concerned, it really should be using capital letters if you go with the classical system. Now, also you can use numbers such as 0, 1, 2, 3 to 9. These are also part of the Fortran language. And then you have certain special characters like plus, minus, dot or decimal sign. Then the brackets, dollar, asterisk, comma, again bracket, equal to the apostrophe, and then the colon, and then there is also the blank. So this is a pretty small set. In many more languages, you have different characters also, but Fortran essentially uses a very small set. So essentially, you have the letters, you have the numbers, and you have these particular special characters. So Remember these special characters because you don't want to use them in some place where you are planning to use some particular variable. It's important to keep in mind where to use these characters. Now let us look at the different type of variables you have. So you have integers, for example, typical numbers such as 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative of 100 these are all integers you have variables and the variables which start with i j k l m n these are essentially integers so this is something which is important in classical fortran is that anything which starts with i j k l m n is classified automatically as an integer now of course it makes a lot of sense because whenever we do math we always use i j k or l m n as the indices of the matrices. So that's where this idea comes from. Now, the different variables which are there, they must be one to six letters or digits. So that's important. And only letters or digits. So let's look at some particular names we can give for integer variables. For example, correct names would be I, J, K1, L2, Jo, Kamala, and wrong names would be something like int dollar because here we are using something which is not a letter or digit. The name Donald because 
that again you see starts with a D. It doesn't start with I, J, K, L, M, N. The word megastar because it's more than six digits or six characters in length. And then something like 2 IJK because it's starting with 2 and you actually have to start with the letter IJKLMN which is there in all these particular variables here. Now if we are going to define a variable for real number we have to follow some different rules. So of course you know real number should be something like 100.0, 12345.0 and so on. So real numbers are essentially decimal numbers and what we can do here is that we can use any particular variable and we should start with the letter except i j k l m n so it is except so it's something important to keep in mind that in classical fortran this is what you do that anything which doesn't start with i j k l m n is a real number variable now again it should be one to six letters or digits and it should be only letters for, or digits so for example some correct representations of real number variables would be some one cent par donald benz and wrong would be something like mega modi because you can see these two begin with m so they are going to be considered to be integers Three stars begins with three, which is actually not a letter. You have to start with the letter. Lexus begins with L, so it will be classified as an integer. And term dollar has this dollar here, which may not be something which is appropriate. So again, only letters or digits. Now, you don't need to follow this particular nomenclature. You can actually define your own variables, and that's something which I recommend. Because a lot of the problems which people used to have in initial Fortran is because they never bothered to define the variables and sometimes that led to problems. So for example, you can say real Lexus, which would essentially define Lexus as a real variable. Or you can say integer Benz, which would then define Benz as an integer. So of course, in classical Fortran, Benz would be considered a real number and Lexus would be considered an integer. Now you can define more than one variable here also. So you can define real Lexus comma I count or you can define integer Benz comma Donald. So this is something which you can do. Now let us look at some basic integer math. So of course you know the integers are things like 2 I negative K 4 minus 5 plus 10 and so on. Again, keeping in mind that i, j, k, l, m, n are always integer if you have not defined them in a different manner. Now, whenever you multiply an integer with a real number, this is essentially going to convert this whole thing into real. So this is not valid if you are planning to do integer math. And similarly, if you are doing i, a raised to the power three, so double star is essentially exponentiation then that is valid, but if you raise it to the power 3.5, that's not valid for integer mathematics. Now, let's look at some formula like this. So how do we translate this formula to Fortran? Is we write i plus j minus k into l plus m to the power three divided by n. So you see clearly you can use plus, minus, multiplication, exponentiation, and division in this manner. And whenever you have some confusion, I would always suggest that you put these brackets out here because that avoids a lot of confusion. So do not try to write m double star 3 slash n. So the operator should not be confused in that manner. It's always better to use parentheses wherever possible. Now let's look at real math. So for example, let's say we had to take this particular expression and write a code for that. So that would simply become a plus b divided by a minus b. Again, parenthesis use is very important. Similarly, if we want to write a square plus 2ab plus b square, that would become a double star 2 plus 2 into a into b plus b into into 2. So again, here, of course, I am presuming that a and b are real numbers. So this is all going to go through pretty well. Now, there are various pitfalls which happen in Fortran because of the confusion between integer and real. 
So for example, let's say this is the equation we want to write a code for, that is fifth root of x plus y to the power negative three. Now the correct way to do it is to raise x to the power 1.0 divided by 5.0 plus y to the power negative three. Because what this would do is that one by five would be subjected to real number division. If you only write one by five, what can happen is that integer division may be done here, which would essentially result in a zero. And one more thing you should not do is skip this bracket or parenthesis here, because what that's going to do is that it's going to create a problem here because two operators are coming in proximity and that generally is something which the compiler doesn't like. So always put it in this form of brackets here. Now let us define some functions which are very important in Fortran. So float essentially converts an integer to a real number. NINT converts a real value to the nearest integer. Int converts a real value to its truncated form. Abs gives you the absolute value and I abs gives the absolute value of an integer. Now, you have A mod and I mod. These essentially give you remainder when two numbers are defined. And in all these cases, I of course is something which is for integers and A would be for real. X would give you exponential function that is e to the power X or something like that. You have A log and A log 10, which are log to the base E and log to the base 10. And you have SQRT, which is essentially the square root, which is there in most languages also. Similarly, you have sine and cos for the sine and cosine function. You have sine h and cos h for the hyperbolic sine and cosine function. You have a sine, a cos, and a tan for the arc sine, arc cos, and arc tan functions. You have a log and a log 10 for log to the base e and 10. And also you have the square root. So let's use some of this knowledge we have gained to solve a simple quadratic equation or write the Fortran for the quadratic equation. So you know if you have an equation ax square plus bx plus c equal to zero, the roots are given by the formula x is minus b plus minus root b square minus 4ac by 2a. So we can say there are going to be two roots here, x1 and x2. And what I need to define is I can define this particular term only once because I'm going to use it twice. So let's define this term as square root of b square minus 4ac. So whenever square is involved, you can even write it as say b into b, that's simpler than exponentiation. And so I can immediately write x1 is negative b plus term divided by 2.0 into a. So again, good practice in Fortran is always try to write these floating point numbers as decimals because that's going to not lead you to any integer type of multiplication and so on. And similarly, x2 can be written in this form here. Now, of course, you could write 2 here also because a is a real variable. It's going to do the multiplication properly. But again, this is something which is good practice to have. Now, of course, if you want to write a real program, you are going to have to input and output to that program in some way. So the simplest thing you can do is use the read and the print statement. So if you are using unformatted read and print, then you can simply write read star comma abc print star comma abc so this is essentially going to read and write the values of abc respectively now some more things are there in fortran which is interesting that for the first six spaces you essentially use blank so there are six blank spaces before the program starts so the program actually should start at the seventh column C is used in the first column for comments. And there are some more things you can do. Sometimes C is also replaced by exclamation mark and so on. But C is the classical way to do it. The program has typically got a stop and end at the end. Now, many new compilers have relaxed these restrictions. And uh, you can play around with them to see what is OK, what is not. And the popular compilers for Fortran are the GNU and the Intel Fortran compiler. So, these are free. GNU is certainly free and you can download them. If you search in Google, you will find the Fortran compilers and you can download them. 
So now we are going to write a program and we are going to compile it. So I have written the quadratic here, the solution of the quadratic, and let's try to solve this. Now, like I mentioned before, a good practice is to simply define all the variables you use. So here I have defined x, a, b, c, x term, x1, x2 as all real numbers. And then I read a, b, c, then I calculate this term value, I calculate x1 and x2, and then I print x1 and x2 here, I stop and end. Now, this is a basic program, and let's see if we can get some compiler to do this for us to see if this is correct or not. So I actually wanted to find an online compiler, and I did find one that is at oncompiler.com slash Fortran. And so here, or I think it is one compiler slash Fortran. And here I saw they had an inbuilt program like uh, this one here. So this, of course, is the program you often get in most programming books, the Hello World program. So you can go to this website and you can compile this and it will give you this. So to compile it, you have to press this red run button here. Now, what I did is I took that same program. I changed that uh, thing to quadratic here and I copied and pasted the program which I had here. And then I ran it. And so what I had to do is in this case, I had to give the input numbers here. So I gave 141. One. These are the values of ABC. So essentially it's reading ABC here. And then what it does, it does the calculation and it this gives me these two as the roots. That is negative 0.26 and negative 3.73. So this was the solution. Now let's check the veracity of this particular solution. So again, I have taken the quadratic here. You know that A is 1, B is 4, C is 1. So I can solve this here. So what I do is I plug B is 4 and I plug A and C is 1. So I get this equation here. So B is 4, A, C are 1, A is 1. Now I simplify this slightly. I get this equation here. That is X is minus 4 plus minus 2 root 3 by 2. Further simplify it by canceling the 2. And so I get these two roots here. So I'm going to get two negative roots. I'm going to get X is minus 0.2679 and minus 3.73205. Let's go back again and check the code here. So you see the solution I have got is exactly what I have got using my calculator. So again, this seems to be working. So again, if you are somebody who just wants an online compiler, this compiler is probably going to work fine for you, but you may also want to download the GNU compiler or the Intel Fortran compiler and do some research in that area. And you can put in the comment section if you were able to get a better compiler and compile this particular simple program. Now, of course, the way I have written this program, it is extremely weak because if the square root turned out to be a negative value or whatever is inside the square root is a negative value, this is not going to work out very well for you. So, of course, I have selected the values one for one that the solutions are real and it's worked out well. But then we are going to see how we can handle the negative inside the square root or all. Later on, we can handle it through complex numbers or we can put the some if statements and all to exclude that possibility. So that we are going to do in our next tutorial lecture. Now the homework you can do today is that try this program out and also try it out with different values of ABC and also with values which result in a complex root and see how it crashes. And also as part of the homework you can write a program which converts temperature in centigrade to Fahrenheit and check it out on that particular online website I showed you because that website is good enough for our class because I think we are mostly going to check code fragments out and learn the language but of course you are welcome to use GNU Fortran or Intel Fortran also that's something which is probably good but then there are students out there who may not have access to some of the powerful computers or the different compilers needed, they can use the online version also. So I'll see you in my next lecture on Fortran and see you then.